Hi, how are you? Hey there. How you doing? Good. How about yourself? Good. Thanks Good. for accommodating me with the time and stuff and being on yeah, a set. Sure. So where are you in the country? I'm in Texas. Oh, Dallas, that's great. Texas. Oh, that's awesome. How is it with all this uh, craziness, all this madness? Uh, honestly, I think uh, we're managing just like, at least I am, uh, just like everybody else, just trying to figure out ways to, um, geez, uh, keep doing life. Yeah, <laughs> sure. I, you, you know, keep training and keep working and stay connected with people. It's definitely been a challenge, but um, just figuring out new ways to get creative and stay on top of things. That's good. That's about the same here. About the same. About the same here. Just running the cycle and 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 seeing what we can do. For sure. So, how do you say your last name? It's Cor Corvina. Yeah. So, uh, so my actual last name is Posas. Okay. Uh, Corvina is actually my middle name. So Gabriella Corvina. Gabriella Corvina. Very good. Well, thank you very much for talking to me today, and I really appreciate it. Yeah, um, I, appreciate I followed you. you on on your website, and I think I saw uh, you had done a YouTube, maybe with either Amy Johnson or Tekla, which you remember you had done with somebody. I don't remember who it was that I yeah, had. Yeah. Um, so I actually uh, met with both of them. Um, okay. Amy Johnson and Tekla. The Amy Johnson. So long story short, uh, I actually did a podcast with Amy and we lost all of our footage. So that oh, wow. Was yeah. So that was I've been there. I've, I've been there. I've been there. Yeah. Totally <laughs> awesome. Fun. Um, and then I've worked with Tekla uh, multiple times. We do a lot of fight scenes and she's great. Stuff together. Yeah. She's awesome. Yeah, she was great. We had a great, great talk. I had done a full when I started the, the podcast. We weren't doing videos at that time. We were just doing audio. Uh, we did a full, I did a full interview with, uh, Olympian, uh, Taekwondo, uh, heavyweight, uh, Steven, uh, Lambden. And it was great, really, a really great interview. And, and the whole thing was gone and he was really gracious. We redid the whole, we, we, we redid it, try to redo it organically. I didn't want it to be like, just, you know, going through the same thing. So I kind of like mixed up what we talked about and stuff, but yeah, I was, sure. I was just in a panic when, after we were done, I went to listen to it and it was just, you could just hear my voice. You couldn't hear him. So it was. It was, it was it. So tell me about um, getting into, I know that you have a family of martial artists and I know that you guys have a very successful, uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about that, but tell me, how do you get involved? how did you get involved in the martial arts and what was your, your first martial art and what did you foray into? So I actually started very traditionally underneath my father. Uh, my father is a fifth Dan in American Kempo Karate, um, combat Kempo. Uh, so all of my training has been under either my father or my older brothers. And my father has trained under Joseph Armador, um, Dan Inosanto. Oh, wow. Uh, geez, uh, Hawk Hawkheim. Um, so that's just a few. Um, I know Hawk Hawkheim was his um, Kempo instructor, I believe. I don't want to get that mixed up, but. Oh, that's all right. Um, yeah, so I trained mainly underneath my father and my older brothers. Um, few cross training between gyms, like my father's gym for a long time was uh, affiliated with the Pitt Chuck Liddell School out in California. I never got to go there, unfortunately. I was a baby at the time. Sure. Um, but a lot of that influence in martial arts, just daddy's girl, just straight, wanting to follow in my dad's footsteps. He, uh, brought me to the gym. I actually remember my very first day. It was, uh, <laughs> he brought me inside of his dojo at the time and he was trying to get me to put on a gi and he's like, oh, hurry, hurry, hurry. So we're getting ready uh, to do something. And uh, my very first class, we were working with Arnie Sticks. Oh, wow. So that's all, I, that's all I pretty much remember of that. But started very traditionally um, with American Kempo Karate and that's my base. So that's kind of my bread and butter. And then from there, as MMA started getting more popular, UFC, we kind of shifted our focus of our family gym to more MMA. So we still had the traditional styles like Filipino Arnis and American Kempo, but we started incorporating the kickboxing, boxing, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. My dad sent my older brother, Donnie, to go train under... Um, I'm just terrible with names today. They'll okay. probably pop up later. But he went to go set my brother to go train. Um, and he kind of brought that 
Brazilian Jiu Jitsu influence back to our gym. So we turned into a full functioning competition gym. So we started taking pro and uh, amateur fighters to go travel and fight. And just ever since I was a baby, been a dojo baby, you know, stepped on the mat and been in it ever since. So that's interesting because, uh, to, you know, we speak to people of um, different walks of life and you are somebody who comes from, uh, I have a, a, a number of, of people that I'm friendly with who sort of grew up in and around their, their, their dojos or their dojangs. Um, some of them have always sort of gravitated towards it. Some have left sort of decided, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to carve out my own path. I want to go to do something else. And then somehow seemingly always end up sort of gravitating back towards it because it's sort of in your, in your blood. What, what's been your experience? You've sort of been in it the entire time. Has it been something that from day one you've been passionate about and, and wanted to stay with? Or do, are there times even now that you go, hey, maybe I want to you know, spread my wings and do something outside the martial arts uh, field? Definitely. So uh, I have a very similar experience to that as well. So, and, you know, growing up and being a girl, and this was mainly younger years, like school years. Uh, I remember being almost ashamed uh, because kids would come up to me and I was the girl in the town who the everybody knew I owned a martial arts school. So they would come up to me and they'd be like, oh, do you do karate? You karate chop stuff? And I'd be like, no, I do MMA. I punch <laughs> stuff and I punch. Yeah. Right. So I would almost be um, ashamed of it. And when I got into acting, uh, I wanted to, and this was around when I was like 12 years old, and I wanted to <laughs> focus all my energy in that. So instead of going to the dojo after school, I wanted to go, to acting classes after school and I wanted to do that whole thing and I remember the day I went to my dad who's always been very supportive and understanding and I was like hey uh, I don't really want to do this anymore and he just said okay wow. <laughs> it was like all right and I and that was very surprising for me and I was like you're not mad and he was like no I knew this day was gonna come and of course, two weeks later, exactly two weeks later of just not doing class, not being there anymore, I got stir crazy. It's just, you sure. get this weird, oh, I have to do it. And, you know, especially since it's a family business and it was so integrated in our lifestyles that that's just not something that I've been able to step away from ever, no matter how long of a period where I feel rough or it feels, I guess, like a standstill in your sure. momentum or your skill set. Uh, those moments where it gets hard, that's where you just have to pu push through. It doesn't necessarily mean that you lose that passion. It's just, just like every relationship, you have to keep pushing past that and build and build and build. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's done for. That's you great. Know, that's, 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 that's actually a great way to express it. That's a really good way to express it. Talk to me about, uh, it's interesting because I'm a, uh, older than you and I come from a traditional martial arts background and I come from a time that was predominantly male. Um, and I've been in it for so long and I see now in, in the generation that's uh, younger than me, one of the things that's really been exciting, one of the things we've featured a lot in the, in the magazine and on shows is that um, it's, it's become... Uh, martial arts for everyone and and regardless of age we have older people younger people kids but the there's a high uh, um, degree of a uh, high performing women in our in our dojang we have women that far exceed probably the work ethic and the capabilities of um, men but for you when you got started it seems like your dad was extremely progressive and the atmosphere was there did you ever have a sense of that you were in a, in a man's world. We talked to Mindy Kelly also, who did the work on the art of self-defense about, you know, male toxicity in, in the dojang and particularly in the traditional martial arts world. Did you ever have the sense that it was a, a male's world and you were fighting to carve out your place or that was never in your consciousness because of the way that you were raised? So really, I, you know, for me, it was kind of um, two ends of the stick because, because I was raised in a, predominant male 
household and also uh, everywhere I went, I was almost always around men, guys, boys, um, because I have five older brothers. Oh, I'm wow. the only girl, the baby. Um, so the only female in my house other than me was my mom. And at the dojo, it was pretty much just me too. Very rarely girls would trickle in, um, but they wouldn't stay very long. So for me, I almost uh, liked it. I, it, it. For me, it made me very competitive. It made me pull out skill sets that I would have not had uh, if I were also around other females because I was forced to fight with the boys. I, there was nobody else. I had to fight with the boys. When I competed in jiu-jitsu um, growing up, I also fought with the boys because there weren't any girls in my division. Sure. So it would be, be, hey, either you go home or you're going to fight. And I'd be like, no, I'm going to fight. <laughs> so it made me competitive. It made me want to do that much more work. It made me want to get faster rather than stronger. Uh, it made me uh, be more tactful in my fighting, in my sparring, because I knew that I had to. Because if I get punched by them, okay, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be hard. But if sure. I can move and if I'm faster than them, then uh, I'll be able to maneuver in this uh, situation. So it made me, I liked it in a sense, but yes, at the same time, uh, there was always a sense of, uh, I guess, trying to pave my own way. But I didn't, I don't think I really felt that until now that I'm in the acting industry. I didn't really feel that whole trying to pave a way sure. until I got into you know, a larger audience of people watching me because, you know, as far as the acting industry goes, you know, we have Cynthia Rothrock and um, a few other women that are kind of in the scene right now, a uh, big, big scene, but we never had any woman uh, anywhere near close to like Bruce Lee, sure. you know what I mean? Um, so I never felt that pressure of really trying to pave my way until like now. Um, but growing up, I, I, shoot, I can even say that I loved it. I liked the competition. I liked being the only girl. It gave me a sense of pride. That's great. So let's talk a little bit about that transition. Um, so you, you have the martial arts base. Obviously, you said when you were around 12, you were looking to do something in, in the acting field. How does that transition occur? What steps do you take and what opportunities open up for you in terms of uh, being able to combine those two passions um, for you? Tell us a little bit about that. Oh, yeah. Um, so for a long time, I just wanted to be a straight actress. So I really didn't think about combining the two for a very long time, um, probably until I was 18. Um, and the reason being is just I didn't think that that was possible for me. It, it was more kind of like, well, I know how to do martial arts, but I want to act. And right. they were two separate things. So I'm doing the whole uh, local um, acting industry here in Dallas, which is mainly commercials. Um, you get a few TV show auditions once in a while, maybe movie auditions once in a while, but they, you know, the industry just isn't that big here. Um, hence my move coming up in January to LA. But anyways, um, that transition was my, it, it was a very depressive state of I'm not going anywhere. And that was killing me for a long time. And what I mean by I'm not going anywhere was that I didn't have any sense of control over my acting career. Meaning um, I'm always waiting for somebody to say yes to me. I'm always waiting for somebody to give me a call. I'm waiting, waiting, waiting for the opportunity to come. Whereas I needed to strap up my shoes and say, no, I need to start making my own content. I need to start paving my own way. I need to start taking control of the situation because that's what a lot of actors do um, is that we're constantly just waiting. We're waiting for somebody right. else to take control of our careers. And it's like, uh, at what point do you say no and, you know, start to say yes to yourself, you know? Um, so I went through this really depressive state where I started to not want to go to acting class. I started not enjoying the things that um, I used to enjoy. And um, I had a conversation with my dad. This was actually on my 18th birthday. And 
Uh, as you can tell, I, my dad has a lot of influence on me. Uh, but it was a conversation of, I just don't really know if I'm going in the right direction. Should right. I give up? Should I um, stop? Am I crazy for thinking that I can do this? Uh, I just don't know what to do. And he goes, well, why don't you get your black belt? Why don't you start training to get your black belt and see what goes from there. And from that end, what, wow, four years, three years later, I get my black belt. <laughs> but um, yeah, that kind of shifted my focus and reminded me, man, I have this whole other talent that I'm just not even pulling right. from. That's my base. That's my ground. That's what keeps me, that, that's what reminds me who I am. That's my pride, you know, and I'm not even using it. So once I started using it, um, it just opened up so many opportunities for me as far as wanting to get into filmmaking, making YouTube videos, making viral videos that blew up my channel, um, getting on a national commercial, being a boxer on an Oikos commercial, um, being on a Smoothie King commercial, being on a Smoothie King billboard, uh, because I was the martial artist. Right. Girl. And those opportunities wouldn't have happened if I kept trying to push that away. So once I finally accepted myself and what I'm good at, not what's everybody else doing? What, you know, what is she doing? What does she have? It's what do I have? And what can I bring to the table? Right. That's yeah. very, that's interesting. That, that, that's an important part of self-awareness. I, I, obviously, when it comes to things like your yoga commercial, which is a great commercial, it's a very memorable commercial, that's stuff that other people produce. But on the stuff that you're doing that's original, uh, there's a whole different skill set involved there. How do you come up with the, what you're doing in terms of, is it, uh, is it done Hong Kong style where you basically have like three page of, or, or a page of an outline and then you fill in the blanks? Or is it very well um, articulated and scripted, uh, move by move kind of, kind of a thing? How do, you, how do you generally work when it comes to doing that stuff? Because you're, and we'll, we'll link all of this stuff, but your YouTube stuff, your, your content is all very, um, it's very, you know, it's, it's high end stuff. Uh, it, it's well choreographed. Uh, it, it's well laid out. Is it something that um, is very, very, very uh, articulated or is it something that's a little bit more, uh, that's a little bit looser? Thank you. Um, I appreciate that. Um, so it's both. Uh, it just depends on the shoot for me. So last year um, and the year before that, because I really only really heavily got into making content two years ago, um, made my first short film about four years ago and that kind of spurred that journey but didn't start heavily trying to push um, online content until two years ago and my main focus when I first started uh, trying to heavily get that content out and just get my name out there as a female martial artist was I'm just gonna make as many fight scenes as I possibly can and that, my, you know, for a long time, I was having a goal. I want to make a video a day, video a day, video a day, oh, wow. whether that's, you know, a high kick and boom, I post that on Instagram or, um, but as far as these fight scene goes, a lot of them are gorilla shot, meaning we go out to a location in public, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. We have, you know, me, my, our actors, and then my friend Jay with his camera and we're like, okay, let's go. And we just shoot. So sometimes we'll make the choreography beforehand, like an hour before we just make something really quick. Okay, let's go shoot it. Um, and I can't tell you how many times we've got chased off by security guards. Yeah, sure. Um, uh, just being in different locations, people freaking out because they think we're actually fighting or um, a lot of times it is on the fly and we just do it in a quick 30 minutes. Boom, okay, it's done, let's go edit it and boom, post it. But with a lot of the bigger ones, those are meaning the high, higher budget films that I do, um, which are longer, like five minute, uh, 10 minute, 20 minute films that I've done um, myself and my team. Those are the ones that are, we're gonna plan this out and we're gonna make this as smooth as we possibly can. And 
of course, with sets and doing low budget um, filmmaking, something happens on set all the time. Sure. Something bad is going to happen all the time. But with those higher budget sets, we do try to be as um, choreographed, ready as we possibly can so that we can be prepared for those mistakes and we can maneuver around them. But that guerrilla shooting, that on the fly, it's made us so much better when we get onto that set and we actually do have the time to really plan something out because we know how to think on our toes um, when it comes to the shooting. So it, 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 it's both. That's great. That, that's great. It's great stuff, and I, I encourage people to check it out, and we'll, we'll link all of it. So tell me what's the, ultimate, what's the ultimate goal. I know sort of for a lot of us, especially since March, and depending on where you are in the country, right, we're all sort of in a holding pattern. We're just trying to yeah. ma maintain. But Absolutely. As, aside from that, what's the ultimate goal? What, do you, what, what, are, you, what are you hoping to do short-term, long-term? Because you've got a lot going on, and what, what do you, how are you looking to parlay it? So short term, um, my big goal right now is to move to LA and go full time filmmaking. So uh, we have a really great connection with YouTube studios. Thank thankfully, um, since building my platform on YouTube, um, they have a program uh, where YouTubers can come for X amount of days and shoot there. They have all the high end equipment um, and that's out there in LA. And that's such a huge resource. So lots of filmmaking, lots of upping our game as far as our short films go. Man, it's been a minute since I made a short film. So definitely want to get back into actually creating again. So that's definitely short term. Uh, continue to train, get better, get ready for the move, be uh, as prepared as I can. Um, I have taken basically this quarantine period this odd time of you know that we're in right now um and i set a goal for myself to read 30 books oh wow that's acting filmmaking martial arts everything that i need to know um and be prepared in screenwriting um i've bought all these books and right now i'm on book 11 so working towards my 30 hopefully before the end of the year and then by January's end, I'll be in LA. Um, Long-term goals, I want to be the most influential female martial artist in uh, filmmaking. That's great. So, uh, I want to pave that way for myself. And I don't know exactly how that looks yet. I don't know, you know, how long that's gonna take. I don't know how I'm gonna get there really, but it's day by day, step by step, practice makes progress and uh i'm making my way making you certainly are you certainly are well on your way and i love that about the books you know we for all of our black belts when we when we um train black belts and we have our black belt test there's always reading requirements we always have numerous reading requirements you know for me in studying successful people my entire life i think one of the things that if you look at people that are highly successful have in common is they just consume knowledge in just a crazy way. If you look at guys like Tony Robbins, or if you look at uh, Rhonda, uh, the woman who wrote The Secret, I think Rhonda, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm having a mental breakdown here, is it Burn or, um, but they're all people that read, they consume books like they're, they're crazy and, and, it, and it always pays off. So I, I love, I love uh, that setting that goal and setting a number of books and, and trying to get through it and keeping track of it. I think that's, that, that, that's really great. I think you're, you're, you're in a great time because, you know, one of the things we've talked to people over the course of um, time, and one of the things that's really happened in martial arts is that um, the elevation of acting and story to meet the, the acting. So people don't necessarily want from martial arts today just, you know, good good kicking, good choreography. Right. They want, you know, somebody would compare it to uh, saying, you know, it's sort of, a, you know, B movie style used to be that it was just people would flip through, you know, you flip right. through the dialogue and you're just gonna go to the fight scenes. But right. quality, we interviewed Scott Atkins and he's been really at the forefront of, you know, his movies are good quality movies. They're well written, they're well directed, the cinematography's good, the fight scenes are good. You sit there and you get a whole, ex a whole experience. So. Absolutely. I think you're really on the right time. And, and a partnership with YouTube, stu YouTube Studios is great. We did Chuck Johnson in Japan. He has a, a dojang. He's got a, one of the only Taekwondo WTF dojangs in Japan. Wow. 
and uh, he did a partnership with YouTube Studios, and he's made some tremendously high and professional yeah. um, martial arts action films that are just just they they equal anything that you'll see in the theaters and anything yeah. that you'll see done by anybody else. So that's, that's exciting. So really for you, you're sort of in, in that holding pattern waiting for the world to break with Corona before you make that move. You don't have a date certain per se. It's basically, um, or, or do you? Per se, um, I definitely, definitely by end of January or beginning of February. And I've um, made that an absolute. So I'm kind of already um, getting all my eggs in a row um, and kind of, separating myself from the things that I had to hear. So it's pretty final, I'd say. Uh, fingers crossed that, you know, we don't go through another sure. crazy thing. But yeah, I definitely want to make it um, a, a for sure thing because at this point, if I don't go, um, to me, it feels like it might just be because of fear, not sure. necessarily because of any other thing you know i can come up with all kinds of excuses to not but it's one of those things where you just feel that it's the right time and you kind of have to sure and no matter how scared you are or how you know and for me none of my family has moved out of texas you know my close family i would be the first i would be going alone um i'm you know 22 it's for me that's like I can't, you know, I can think back and, you know, being 12 and like, oh, one day I'm going to move to California and I'm going to do it. And now that it's here, it's like, man, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, but even that in itself, just making that move for me is, is huge because I know how much growth it took for me personally sure. um, to make that. So I'm excited and I feel ready. It's uh, just a matter of finishing out this year strong and uh, staying focused. Well, it's great. It's an adventure. And like you said, in fear and we, you know, part of being a martial artist is learning that fear is natural, but you overcome it. I mean, you, 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 right. you, you face an opponent and you know, unless you're of a certain mindset, anybody feels fear, but you overcome that fear and you, and you do, you know, you do what you got to do. So that's great. Right. And, and that's exciting. Uh, I, I think it's an exciting time for you, and I know there's, there's going to be great things in, in your future. Do you do you spend time teaching at all, or, or is that really not – do you not have the time? In, in, in the uh, the dojo, do you, do you – or in the, the school, do you spend time uh, – Yeah, to uh, so that's, what I, that's what I do uh, currently. So besides the part-time acting, what I can go audition, um, that's what I do full-time. So I actually personal train. So I'm actually a certified personal trainer. Um, and at our boxing gym, which is now deemed a boxing gym, um, we meet my brother and I. I'm a little bit less involved in, in the business and I have my own personal students. Sure. So I, I train ages five all the way, you know, up. But um, that's what I do full time right now. So... Uh, moving out to LA uh, will be a shift of focus for sure, but I, I don't think I'll ever really step away from teaching. I think teaching has been so deeply ingrained in me because that's, you know, I've been teaching shoot since I was like 10 years old, sure. you know? So um, I don't think I'll ever truly get away from teaching and whether that's online to my audience or, you know, personal training, um, or one-on-one -on -one or class. Um, I'd like to start doing seminars at some point. I'd like to start traveling and teaching at some point, but um, yeah. So I, I definitely enjoy teaching and I'd like to keep doing it as long as I can. That's great, that's great. In the interest of time, as we wind down, I want to give you an opportunity, you know, particularly, you know, one of our, our, our strongest messages throughout the last few years has been, um, you know, speaking to particularly young, girls and young women that get involved in the martial arts um, about what it can do for them, both in terms of their life and their mental attitude and their opportunities for success. So I wanted to give you an opportunity to, to uh, speak to any of them and give them any, any of your thoughts or advice on, on getting into um, the martial arts and using it to help them accomplish things in their life. 
Ooh, that's always the, that's always the big meaty question. Always. Um, that's kind of my why in everything I do. Of course, my family, but you know, a big reason why I do what I do and I make my films and uh, I push myself as a martial artist um, is because I want, I want girls around the world to feel like, hey, if she can do it, you know, I can do it. And, you know, a lot of times I get uh, criticism online because it's like, oh, you know, you know, you're always showing yourself beating up these men. Are you anti-men or, uh, you know, do you actually believe that you can do that? And that's totally besides the point. Um, it's a matter of showing young girls, females, women in general, that we need to learn to defend ourselves. And it's empowering seeing that. It's um, not just kicking butt, but it's empowering seeing that, wow, this woman can she can take care of herself. She's um, educated in what, what she's doing. She actually does this. It's not a stunt right. double. It's not, you know, this is somebody who uh, has trained to do this specifically. And I think that's really important. Um, I think it's really important for girls to uh, be able to defend themselves. I truly 110% believe that every girl, every female should take a self-defense class martial arts class, karate class at some point in their life um, and actually uh, take it seriously because, you know, unfortunately, this world is scary and um, it can be very uh, scary for women. It can be very scary for women at times. And I think especially kind of there's a lot of agendas being pushed on young girls right now in the media. Um, and I think now more than ever, we need women who can take care of themselves and feel, uh, empowered meaning. So a lot of times, you know, you'll hear women are scared to cross the street. Women are scared to go to their car. A lot of times they have to hold their key in their fists. Sure. Um, they have to have their pepper spray. And if we can diminish that fear just a little bit because she is confident in herself that if somebody was to come up to me right now, I can at least get away. Sure. I can at least get away. Um, and that's really important. That's Absolutely. really important. I think having that sense of confidence is just unbeatable. And that's what martial arts has given me. And that's, that's my experience. I go back to martial arts all the time because it gives me that grounding, because it gives me that confidence, um, because it reminds me that I can take care of myself as a woman. Um, and I think that's, I think that's really important. That's great. And I, and I, ha I don't have uh, any daughters, but if I did, I would want them to be empowered by that message. And I would have them in the Dojang probably from as early as from the time that they could walk for exactly this, the same reason. For the same reasons I have my sons from the time that they, that they could walk. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. That's great. So let me, uh, we, we have about uh, two minutes left. Uh, I want to be able to give people the opportunity. We're going to link it all up, but tell people the best place to find out, um, to, to find your videos and to find out more about your life and, and career. What would be the best places for them to go to learn more about what's going on with you and follow your journey? So I'm pretty much everywhere under Gabriella Corvina, G-A-B-R-I-E-L-L-A, -L -L and then Corvina, C-O-R-V-I-N-A. That's on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. I do a lot of uh, YouTube more than anything. That's my main platform. So if you want to keep up with me and my vlogs and uh, just the day-to-day -day training, YouTube would be the best place. I'm pretty active on Instagram as well. Um, and that's pretty much me. <laughs> well, that's great. And we're going to post all that. And we want to thank you so much for talking to us today. And we wish you all success, whether you stay in Texas or you go to Los Angeles. And you know that we'll be following your career. So I, I, I thank you very I much. I appreciate you, Mark. Hey, very good. And you're, and you're a pleasure to speak to. And I thank you so much. And I look forward to seeing you. you. Texas is on, my, is on my list. I have to go visit the, uh, the Chuck Norris people in, uh, in Houston. Absolutely. So I'm hoping to pick a good, a, a good uh, visit to Texas as soon as this yeah. all clears up. So take care. Thank you <laughs> very right. much for the time. Be well. Have a good one. You too. Bye. It was a pleasure. You too.